Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I want to uh, thank the organizers for having me here. I'm, I'm from the condensed matter side of this community. Um, so we are studying materials in cavities. And the, so the goal is to modify and control material properties using photons, especially cavity photons, to go into the strong and ultra-strong coupling regime. And we're interested in, in modifying properties such as topological properties and superconducting properties, ferroelectric properties, and ferromagnetic properties. And we are always in the strong coupling regime where the Rabi splitting is larger than the, uh, de uh, the decay rates in the system. But I want to emphasize that we are interested in the regime where the, um, the number of photons is negligible in the sense that the, uh, we are studying properties modified uh, through ultra-strong coupling with, with the quantum vacuum, vacuum fluctuation fields inside the cavity in the complete absence of any external electric fields. So we are obviously uh, 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 using the language of cavity uh, QED of, of quantum optics of atomic and molecular systems, but the system is, our systems are very different um, in the sense that the, so we replace uh, single atoms and molecules with a condensed matter material, okay, which contains many, many electrons, uh, interacting electrons uh, with additional uh, electron phonon and spin orbit uh, interactions. But there are many reasons why we want to study this kind of systems. So one of them is um, typically condensed matter systems, solid state systems have resonances and excitations uh, with huge dipole moments that cannot be uh, accessed uh, with AMO systems. Um, uh, large dipole moments, in addition, uh, this Dickey cooperativity so the uh, uh, different moments, different uh, dipole moments can cooperate in enhancing the light matter interaction. So we can easily go into the strong and ultra strong light matter uh, coupling in using a condensed matter a cavity QED systems. And in all our experiments, uh, what we experimentally look for is anti-crossing or avoided crossing behaviors. So here the y-axis is the frequency or energy of the system, and the x-axis is the, uh, uh, the detuning between the, the, the photon frequency and the matter frequency. We usually use an external magnetic field to tune the matter frequency to go into and out of the, uh, the resonance with the, with the cavity uh, photon uh, frequency. And in the strong coupling regime, we see avoided crossing forming uh, uh, the polaritons. Uh, in the vicinity of the zero detuning, the upper polariton and the uh, lower polariton, and the, the frequency difference between the two is the uh, normal mode splitting or the Rabi, Rabi splitting. And the Rabi splitting between the, the lower polariton and upper polariton depends on three uh, parameters. G, which is the most important parameter that I will be talking about. This is the light matter coupling constant. Delta is the detuning between the two, light and matter, and N is the average number of photons inside the, the cavity. The most interesting and relevant at, at the, the Rabi splitting is the on resonance vacuum Rabi splitting, where delta is zero and N is zero. N is zero, which means that the average number of photons inside the cavity is zero, but still, the light matter coupling produces splitting. Why is that? Why, what, what is the matter coupled with? This is coupling with the fluctuating zero-point electromagnetic fields, quantum fluctuation fields inside the cavity uh, related to the, the Casimir effect. And this corresponds to the zero-point energy, one-half times h bar omega at a given frequency and corresponding to the spectral density, which is proportional to the cube of the omega. So the, 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 the quantum vacuum has infinite energy if you integrate in, in the old, old frequency. 
right? But on the other hand, uh, the effects of, of such zero-point electromagnetic fields, quantum fluctuation fields, are usually very, very small. Right? If, you, if you think about the lamp shift, the van der Waals, and the, the uh, force and the Casimir effect, the magnitudes of, of those effects are very, very small. Recently, uh, uh, people in the condensed matter uh, community have been observing extremely strong uh, an ambiguous vacuum field effects in solid state materials inside cavities, including huge vacuum rubby splittings on the order of or even larger than the bare cavity frequency. And the vacuum block Seagard shift, which indicates the, the breakdown of the rotating wave approximation, which exceeds the, the, the line width. Obvious, obvious uh, 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 effects, vacuum effects, okay? So that's why in, in this uh, field of, of, of uh, condensed matter physics, we are asking the following question, okay? So instead of driving, driving matter, materials using strong laser fields, can we just place our material inside a cavity and rely, we rely on, on the ultra-strong coupling between matter and the cavity fields or quantum fields to modify and control material properties. For example, can we modify electrical conductivity with vacuum photons, which would, which would correspond to lightless photoconductivity? Can we increase the transition temperature of a superconductor just by placing it inside a cavity? Can we modify the topology of an electronic band by using circularly polarized cavity fields? Or can we create or destroy phases of matter right, just using cavity vacuum fields? There are many, many interesting ideas in the literature, in the recent literature. Um, the, all these are theoretical papers, stimulating, um, encouraging uh, experimentalists us uh, to uh, uh, explore strong coupling physics in cavities, in, in condensed matter systems. So within my, my group, we, we, uh, we've been using different types of platforms, condensed matter cavity QED platforms, um, including Landau polaritons, exciton polaritons, magnum polaritons, and phonon polaritons. These are traditional light matter coupled polariton systems. We also have some exotic uh, systems without including light. You know, spin magnum ultra strong coupling and magnum magnum coupling and plasmon plasmon coupling systems. So in, in, in these systems, we don't have photons. Instead of phot so, so in, in the in the Dickey model, you, you don't need to have photons. You can have another type of boson, right? So the the, the, role, the, the role of photons is played by magnons and plasmons in, in, in these systems. So I, I want to uh, 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 emphasize the fact that we are, we're not using any external fields, right? So we, we're not driving the system, okay? So we're just using cavities to, to go into the ultra-strong coupling regime. The most important parameter is G, light matter coupling strength, which depends on uh, uh, the parameters coming from the cavity and the matter side. So in particular, the, 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 the vacuum electric field strength is proportional to, or inversely proportional, to the square root of the mode volume. So we want the cavity to be as, as small as possible so that we can, we can decrease the mode volume of, of the photonic mode that couples with, with the matter. And the, the other parameter is the, the, on the matter side is the dipole moment, right? So that, that tells us how strongly the matter couples with the, with, with the, uh, with the vacuum fields. So the, it, it is the product between the, the dipole moment, or oscillator strength of, of the transition, and the vacuum field strength that determines the, the coupling constant. Furthermore, uh, the, the coupling constant can be can be enhanced cooperatively if you have many, many dipole moments, uh, di many dipoles. So if, 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 if G0 or G0 is the, the single atom light matter coupling, 
then the, the light matter coupling can be enhanced uh, by a factor of a square root of n, if you have n dipoles. So the main advantage of using condensed matter systems compared to AMO systems is we have so many uh, electrons, so many uh, uh, atomic, atomic dipoles. So that's, that's why we can go into very strong coupling regimes. And as you know, that the, when, when, the, when, the, when the, the, the splitting is much, much larger than the line width, right, then the light matter coupling rate dominates the, the dynamics of the system. So the, so the light matter coupling is faster, faster than any other, de any decay rates. So we are in the strong coupling regime, right? So the, the, the cooperativity is 4G squared over gamma kappa. Gamma is the matter decay rate, kappa is the, 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 the photon decay rate determined by the Q factor. So, so the, the strong coupling regime is nothing new. I mean, even in AMO systems, you can easily achieve. But in condensed matter systems, we can go into this ultra strong coupling regime where the light matter coupling rate is comparable to or even larger than the, the bare frequency, bare resonance frequency, atomic and, and cavity frequency. This is, this is very unusual because you have two, two frequencies, light and matter, but the, the G is supposed to tell us that the rate at which the energy is exchanged between the light and, and, and matter. But if, if this is larger than omega zero, which means that the, the energy is exchanged even before one, one cycle, one optical cycle of the, of the original oscillator. So, so this is, so it's, which means that the light and matter are not, not well defined in, in, in this regime. They're completely hybridized. Okay, so uh, um, I, have, uh, um, I have three experimental systems that I, I want to talk about today. So, so the first system, we know very, very well, but it's not related to spin, so I, I, I don't want to spend too much time on, on the first. But we have many, many, many papers on, on, on this Landau polaritons and quantum hole systems. So I want to very quickly, very quickly go, go through this because this, this gives us some uh, basic uh, dis descriptions about uh, ultra strong light matter coupling. It's, it's a very tunable uh, 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 system and very e uh, easy to describe. And then I want to talk about spin photon ultra strong coupling and then spin magnon ultra strong coupling. So the first system so, uh, is, is a two dimensional electron gas in a, in a strong perpendicular magnetic field which produces quantum Hall states. Okay, so the, uh, so the system is, is a two dimensional metal with, with well, well defined Fermi energy which produces two groups of Landau levels. Um, uh, occupied Landau levels and empty Landau levels. And the transition that occurs, that coupled with the cavity fields, is the one that uh, uh, goes from the highest occupied Landau level and the lowest unoccupied Landau level. Okay, so this is a quantum picture, but this is nothing but the classical picture of cyclotron, cyclotron resonance with, uh, with the frequency omega c, which is proportional to b. So um, with, 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 uh, by changing the magnetic field, we can continuously tune the, mag, uh, the cyclotron frequency, which can go into and out of resonance with the, with the cavity uh, photonic uh, frequency. Realistically, uh, we're using one-dimensional terahertz photonic cavities using, using alternating layers of silicon and vacuum. Silicon, vacuum, silicon, vacuum. But because of the large uh, index uh, difference between uh, silicon and vacuum, we can just use just a few, few layers on, on each side to make a very, very good uh, 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 cavity. And then we, what we do is we place a material inside the cavity, and let's say we apply a DC, DC magnetic field to quant Landau quantize the 2D electron gas, and then we come in uh, with very weak terahertz electromagnetic field, and uh, uh, we, we actually circularly polarize the, the, the terahertz uh, probe. This is important because the magnetic field produces a circular motion of, of electrons. So that, that's why the, the circular polarization is, is very important in this. So this is a series of transmittance spectra at different 
magnetic fields from minus 3 tesla to plus 3 tesla. Again, the, the, the sign of the magnetic field is important. This is the upper polariton, this is the lower polariton, and the, uh, the zero detuning occurs here, right? So, so the difference between here and here uh, is the vacuum, on resonance, vacuum Rabi splitting, or 2G, much, much larger than gamma and kappa, and the cooperativity is 3,513. And furthermore, the, the, the coupling, yes, the splitting is 72% of the original uh, bare frequency, which means that we are in the ultra-strong coupling regime. The most important uh, 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 part of, of this work was the direct evidence for the breakdown of the rotating wave approximation. Which, so, the, so qualitatively, what, what this means is the, in, in the negative magnetic field range, that the electrons are moving like this, but then the photons are moving like this, opposite. So, so usually in the weak coupling regime, we don't expect anything. But in the ultra-strong coupling regime, even though elect electrons are moving like this, and the electrons are move, uh, photons are moving like this, we, we still see uh, a coupling, okay? So, the, yeah, so Jane's Cummings model and the uh, Tavis Cummings models are done in the rotating wave approximation. They're missing the counter-rotating terms and the, the A-squared term, but if only by including all those, we were able to uh, get agreement between experiment and theory. Furthermore, uh, we were able to uh, observe uh, Dickey cooperativity by changing the electron density uh, of, of, uh, of the system. Uh, we were able to show that the Rabi splitting is proportional to, to the square root of the electron density. So let me move on to the second uh, part. Spin photon ultra strong coupling. Five minutes, yes. Right, so the, uh, so the first part, so the Landau level system is, is, is very, very nice. We, we can easily uh, 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 model that, but that system is, is mostly classical in the sense that the cyclotron resonance is a bosonic excitation. We, we, can, we can model it as a simple harmonic oscillator. So, it's, so in that case, it's an it's a, it's a interaction between two simple harmonic oscillators, boson-boson interactions. But in, in the case, when we have an ensemble of paramagnetic spins, then we can more truthfully represent the, the, the original Dickey model, which is an, uh, the interaction of an ensemble of N two-level atoms or, or, or spins with a single mode of cavity photons. So that's why we, we're using uh, param paramagnets. Okay, um, the, um, the actual system we're using is something called GGG, gadolinium gallium oxide, and we're uh, interested in the spins of gadolinium three plus ions. Um, so here, it's at, 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 uh, when the magnetic field, external magnetic field is low, there's some complication due to uh, uh, hyperfine splittings and spin orbit and crystal fields. But if you go to high fields like 20 tesla or larger, we, we have a very special uh, tabletop magnet which, which, which allows us to do terahertz spectroscopy at, at such high magnetic fields, then the, the basically the Zeeman, Zeeman term in the Hamilton, Hamiltonian dominates. Okay? So in this case, we can see uh, a nice uh, EPR mode, single, single peak EPR, which is tunable with the magnetic field, which which couple with, 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 the, with the field, um, with cavity field. So the, but the interesting thing is uh, the magnetization of this paramagnetic ensemble uh, obeys Curie's law. So, that it, so that it depends on the temperature and magnetic field. So in this particular form, the brilliant function, the, uh, this is the, the Zeeman energy, and this is the, the thermal energy. So, um, so the, the G factor, so the EPR strength depends on the temperature, which is something different from the boson-boson model, which is described by the Hopfield model, the, the cyclotron resonance, Landau polaritons, the, there's no temperature dependence in, in the coupling constant. But in the case of the spin-boson case, it, 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 it increases with, with decreasing temperature. So this allows us to observe this interesting interplay between uh, the light matter coupling and dissipation. 
So they, at, at high temperatures, where there's a lot of dissipation, but no, but no. At high temperatures, the, the coupling constant is weak, you know, that because G, G is temperature dependent. At high temperatures, G, G loses. Basically, the kappa and gamma wins. So that's why we have a, a, a single, single mode, right? But then at, at, as, we go, we, as we cool down the system, we go through uh, this uh, exceptional point, um, uh, the, and below, below which then the, we, we, we see this splitting. So we can go, th by just cooling down the system, we can go from weak coupling through strong coupling, ultra strong coupling. And, the, and the, this exceptional point, which is a temperature, uh, depends on, on the magnetic field. This is 20 Tesla, this is about uh, 80 Kelvin. At 25 Tesla, the exceptional point is higher, so it is closer to, to room temperature. Okay, and we were able to, uh, to fit our data for, to deduce that the coupling constant as a function of magnetic field. Let me move on to the, the last uh, 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 most interesting part, so the spin magnon coupling. So this is related to the so-called uh, uh, Dickey super radiant phase transition. Let me remind you that the, within this simple uh, theoretical description, so the, uh, the, the splitting between the lower, lower polarity and upper polarity is 2G. And the, the, as we increase the G, when G becomes equal to omega zero, the, when the coupling constant becomes equal to the bare, bare frequency, then the lower polarity energy becomes zero because it's G minus omega zero, which becomes zero. And as we keep increasing the coupling constant, then the energy of the lower polarity becomes negative, which means that the, the, the simple model just breaks down. And there is a, some, some sort of uh, instability in the system. So this was first noted by Hepp and Lieb in 1973, which, uh, uh, who, uh, who predicted, uh, constructed this phase diagram as a function of a normalized temperature and the normalized coupling constant, predicting the existence of, of a new phase at low enough temperatures and high enough light matter coupling constant. And the, the most important, the most interesting situation occurs when, when the temperature is even zero. So this corresponds to quantum phase transition. So they, uh, even at t equals zero, when the light matter coupling constant exceeds a certain threshold, atomic inversion appears. This is very, very strange, right? Because at t equals zero, all the atoms should be in, in, in the ground state. And the photon number, again, we, we're not driving the system. We're just using vacuum photons, and then the photon number should be zero. But the, the number of photons becomes finite. That's why sometimes called this transition is called photon condensation. But then it was immediately uh, 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 pointed out that the, that phase transition should not occur because the uh, Hep and Lieb did not include the, the A squared term in the light matter Hamiltonian. Because if you include the A squared term, the energy of the lower polarity never becomes negative. It asymptotically approaches zero as the light matter coupling constant goes to infinity. So there's no phase transition, no go theorem. But this was just the beginning of, of many years of uh, 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 discussions or theoretical debates among, among theorists. Since the 1970s, so I have no time to, to, to go through this, 1970s and 2018, but very recent, until 2000, yeah, very recent years, and, and some, of, some of the theorists in, in, in the audience, I don't need to talk about this. But the point is this A squared, how can we eliminate the A squared term to induce the phase transition? And the, so one, one key idea was, was already pointed out by Knight in 1978. All the no-go theorems are usually apply to electric dipole moments, right? So we, if we go to the magnetic dipole moments and spin systems, we, can, we, we may be able to avoid the no-go theorem. That's why we are using magnets to, to, to address uh, these, these issues and questions. So one particular system we are working on is, is a, a rare earth orthoferrite, erbium ion oxide. This is a unique magnet system containing two magnetic subsystems, um, ion spins and erbium spins. And they strongly interact with each other. And the, 
ion spins antiferromagnetic order at 650 K, very, very high temperature. So in all our experiments, our ion spins are, are ordered. Okay, the erbium spins remain paramagnetic uh, down to uh, four, four Kelvin. Okay, but then the uh, yeah. So so in the in so we do terahertz spectroscopy, and the uh, so the magnons ion ma ion spins produce beautiful magnon oscillations in the terahertz regime, but also the um, erbium spins they they show various crystal field transitions in the terahertz regime. But then it, at low enough temperatures and high enough magnetic fields, the only important transition is this transition between the Kramer's doublet in, in this up and, so this is basically electron, electron spin resonance or electron paramagnetic resonance, which increases with the magnetic field. And then when it meets the uh, a magnum frequency, it produces this ultra strong coupling, uh, vacuum Rabi splitting. And the Rabi splitting uh, is cooperative, okay? So by, by diluting the spins, by substituting erbium by yttrium, right? But we were able to demonstrate that the, the coupling constant is proportional to the square root of the number of spins. They're demonstrating uh, Dickey cooperativity in this magnetic system. So the, the picture that emerges from this is very interesting because so, the, uh, so this is our system. So we, we, have, we have N spins, erbium spins, and we have a magnetic field, right? This, so this is an analogy to the, the Dickey situation where you have an N two-level atoms interacting with a single mode of photons. And the, but the, the, it's not the, the, the end of the story. So because there is a phase transition which we attribute to the occurrence of of a magnonic version of the super radiant phase transition. And the, yeah, so at, at it, which occurs at 4K, um, yeah, I don't have time, so, but, but the, the system is, is far from the, the Dickey model. It, it's much more complicated because it, it's a condensed matter system. It's a real, real sample. So instead of a single mode, we have multiple modes, multiple, multiple magnonic modes and the system is anisotropic with, with different G, G uh, light matter coupling constants. And also the erbium erbium direct exchange interactions are important, which, which are usually ignored in, in the Dickey model. But the most important thing I want to point out is there's no A squared term. So we don't have to worry about the uh, no-go theorem predicted for the Dickey phase transition. And uh, yeah, so this is a, a predicted, uh, uh, Phase transition, we have experiments, terahertz, magneto, spectroscopy, and when we go through this phase transition, we see this kink. And when we go through this, we see this kink, right? And the, yeah, uh, yes, so we have, there's a super radiant phase, a normal phase. Uh, we also have some uh, ma uh, microwave magneto spectroscopy data. Um, Furthermore, when, when the magnetic field is along the z-axis, uh, we, we have this new, new, new phase. Uh, yeah, new phase. Okay. So let me, let me summarize. So the yeah, cavity QED in solids can be very different from cavity QED of atomic molecular systems. And because of the existence of many, many uh, uh, electrons, interacting electrons, and the cooperative light matter in uh, interaction. So we, we, can, we can expect hybridization of matter and photons to produce new phenomena and new, new, new phases. So we, we're working on uh, many different uh, interesting material systems, superconductors, ferromagnets, antiferromagnets, carbon nanotubes, graphene, strongly correlated materials like MOT insulators and condo insulators. And these are uh, my uh, collaborators and the uh, funding agencies. Thank you very much.